We're now ready to install the backplate for our CPU cooler and there's two different options this backplate can be installed in. Out of the box, the pins are all pushed in towards the middle and that's for LGA 1200. If you've got an LGA 1700 or an LGA 1851 socket like we do here, you're gonna to wanna to pull these all to the outer setting. So all you're gonna to want to do is pull the pins all the way to the outer setting and then they should line up with the holes in the back of the motherboard. So just a matter of line them up and they then should fit through. And then we're gonna have one of these spacers to push on to each corner. If you've got an AMD motherboard with an AM4 or AM5 socket, the first thing you're gonna do is remove these standard mounting clips. And then you've got these brackets, one to go at the top and one to go at the bottom. And you'll notice on the bracket, there is a little arrow pointing towards the CPU. So make sure you install the correct way around. And then you can secure it using the screws you've just removed. We're now ready to start working our I.O. and we do some plastic protection on both sides of it we're going to need to remove. So now for my favourite bit of the installation, we're going to join our fans together and they are going to attach magnetically. So just need to bring them in contact and that's our three fans connected up. So in terms of powering our fans, if you look at this end, we have got a female connector. And if we turn the fans around on the other side, we've got a male connector. The I.O. comes with two different cables and again there's a female connector and a male connector so you are able to put your fan cables on either end. So you just need to line these up in your I.O. and decide which end you want the cables coming out. So I'm going to head and line it up in the case and I think the connectors are going to look best on this end here where they're going to be hidden behind our tubes. So we've got the male connectors here so it means I'm going to need to use the female cable and again connecting it is completely magnetic. That's it done. Coming from the other end of the cable, we've got two connectors. First of all, we've got a four pin PWM cable and we're gonna plug that into our CPU fan header. And the other is a three pin five volt ARGB cable. And we're gonna plug that into an ARGB header on the motherboard. So we can go ahead and set our fans onto the radiator and then we're gonna secure them into place using the long radiator screws. So now we come on to our pump and coming from it, we've got two cables. We've got another four pin PWM cable and we're gonna plug that into our pump header on the motherboard. And we've also got a USB cable. We plug that into a USB 2.0 cable. It's gonna allow us to use Armory Create to control the effects on the pump screen and adjust all our fans as well. Now importantly, this screen is magnetically attached. All we need to do is pull it off and that's gonna simplify the installation process. The other thing you'll notice if we pull the plastic protection off is that we have thermal paste pre-applied. So we just need to be really careful that we don't damage this during the installation process. Next, we're gonna to have to adjust this bracket. You can see in this position, there's one little notch here, but if we take the bracket and push it up the way, you'll notice now that two notches have appeared. Okay, so you can see the two notches there. For LGA 1700, 1200, and for AMD installations, you're gonna to wanna to have the two notches showing. For 1851, we're gonna want the one notch, so we're just gonna push this back down again, and you can see here we've got one notch. So for LGA 1200 and AMD installations, you're gonna to wanna to have these thumb screws pushed all the way towards the middle. For LGA 1700 and 1851, you're gonna to to pull these all the way to the outside. We can then set our top fan bracket onto the radiator, and we'll secure it into place with the short radiator screws. Just before I set the I.O. into place at the top, I'm just gonna pass our fan cables through to the back, and then we can lower the I.O. down into place. To help keep our cables organized going up to the top of the motherboard, I like to wrap the fan cable round the coal plate, and I'm also gonna loosely route our USB cable round here as well. And then we can line the pump up with the bracket we've already installed on the motherboard. And then we can tighten up the thumb screws using the screwdriver. And then we can replace our magnetically attached screen. So I'm just gonna route our USB cable through to the back, and then we can plug the USB cable coming from our pump into the motherboard. We can now see all the fan headers at the top of the motherboard. The one third from the left-hand side is our IIO pump header. So we'll route the cable coming from our pump up and get it plugged in. And then we'll just bring all the excess cable up towards the top of the case and pass it through the cutout to the back. The header to the far left is our CPU fan header. So we'll pass the PWM cable coming from our fans through, line it up and push into place. And also coming from our fans in the radiator, we've got an ARGB cable. So we'll bring it through the cutout at the side, line it up with the ARGB header and push into place. And then we've got some plastic protection on our screen we can remove. So you'll notice I have decided to install the tubes towards the rear of the case. The only reason for doing this is to make space for our screen. I don't think the tubes looping over the screen is going to look particularly great. But I think if you're not installing the screen on the side, I would definitely have the tubes coming to this side of the radiator because it is going to look much better and it won't obstruct the rear fan quite as much. 
Okay, so now we come on to the software setup where you're gonna be able to adjust the RGB of the fans and also what's displayed on the screen. So you're gonna to need to go ahead and download Armory Crate. You'll find a link to this in the description. And once it has been downloaded, go ahead and install it. Just follow the steps for installation and it will take you into the Armory Crate. So there's two different options. The first thing is to control the RGB and to do this, you're gonna click on the Aura Sync tab. You can select the devices that you want to sync. So it'll actually be the RGB header on our motherboard that is controlling the lighting on the fans and then click on the Aura effect. So you can see at the moment, I've gone for a static and we're going for a static red, but there's a whole variety of different effects here that you can pick. So for example, if we click on rainbow, you'll see that the lighting on our fans has turned to rainbow. You've got color cycle, strobing, breathing, but for this particular build, I'm just quite happy with a static red. If you wanna change the color, you can go into the color and type in the color that you want or pick a different color from the top. But like I said, I'm happy with a static red, so we'll leave it on this. Next thing to control the screen and the fans, you're gonna to have to go to the particular device. So we click here on the device tab and we'll select our AIO. Okay, so this is where we're gonna be able to adjust the effects on our screen. So you can see currently the image is selected and that is what is playing. If we wanna change this up, we just click on a different one that we want to apply click on apply and you'll notice that is now being displayed on our screen. You have the option of uploading your own files and you can see you can upload a picture, a GIF or a video. We can have this set to the time and click on apply. And I'll give you a look at what that looks like and you've got a couple of different effects for the clock if that's what you want to have up. The other option that you have is a hardware monitor. So you can click here. And again, you've got a few different options for how this is displayed. Um, you can have a single piece of information coming up at the moment. You can see it's gone for package temperature, or you can have multiple. So let's click a triple info. We have got our CPU package temperature. We've got the, let's have another temperature. And we've got a whole variety of options here. Let's have our GPU temperature. And then we've got fan speed of the GPU. Um, we can have voltages or frequencies. So let's pick P-Core 1. And then we'll click on Apply. And you'll see that now being displayed on our screen. In terms of controlling our fans, we just need to click over on Fan Control. Okay, so here's where we're gonna be able to control the embedded fan. Now that's the fan behind the screen and also our pump. The CPU fans, they're plugged into your CPU fan header, so we're gonna to have to control them in our motherboard BIOS. So at the moment, let's look at the embedded microfan. It's running on the smart mode, and you can see the fan curve it's running on. The yellow dot is the current temperature and the current speed of that fan. And these are the different points. So we are able to adjust that curve if we want to. Um, we can also run that fan at a fixed speed. So we can drag this up or down to get it to where we want. So if we want to run that a little bit lower, that would actually turn it off, or we can run it at full speed which would add an awful lot of extra noise into the build. Um, click default again to go back to the default. And if we want to keep it on our smart mode, we can do that. We've also got the option to pick one of these profiles. So that's the silent profile. We've got our standard profile, turbo, and full speed. But obviously full speed brings a lot of noise. So I'm going to leave that on the default profile in the smart mode. Um, in terms of the pump, again, we've got the options to adjust this as well. At the moment, it's currently running in the default smart mode profile. But again, you've got the options to turn that pump all the way up if you want by going for a fixed mode. 